Welcome back to the Military Meditation Coach, your source for meditation, mindfulness, and relaxation exercises. Made for the military, but good for everyone. I'm Dr. Julie Kin with the Defense Health Agency, and today is the fourth part in our four-part series on guided imagery. This time, Mr. Michael Miller is joining us. He's going to be leading about a 22-minute guided imagery exercise. He calls it a mountain meditation. Hello. My name is Michael Miller, and I teach mind-body medicine in the TBI clinic. This is a mountain meditation. This meditation is normally done in a sitting position, either on the floor or a chair, and begins by sensing into the support you have from the chair or the cushion, paying attention to the actual sensations of contact. Finding a position of stability and poise. Upper body balanced over your hips and shoulders in a comfortable but alert posture. Hands on your lap or your knees, arms hanging by their own weight, like heavy curtains, stable and relaxed. Actually sensing into your body, feeling your feet, legs, hips, lower and upper body, arms, shoulders, neck, head. And when you are ready, allowing your eyes to close, bringing awareness to breath, the actual physical sensations, feeling each breath as it comes in, and goes out. Letting the breath be just as it is, without trying to change or regulate it in any way. Allowing it to flow easily and naturally with its own rhythm and pace, knowing you are breathing perfectly well right now. Nothing for you to do. Allowing the body to be still and sitting with a sense of dignity, a sense of resolve, a sense of being complete, whole, in this very moment, with your posture reflecting this sense of wholeness. As you sit here, letting an image form in your mind's eye of the most magnificent or beautiful mountain 
you know or have seen or can imagine. Letting it gradually come into greater focus. And even if it doesn't come as a visual image, allowing the sense of this greater focus of the mountain and feeling its overall shape, its lofty peak or peaks high in the sky, the large base rooted in the bedrock of the earth's crust, its steep or gently sloping slides. Noticing how massive it is, how solid, how unmoving, how beautiful. Whether from afar or up close. Perhaps your mountain has snow covering its top and trees reaching down the base or rugged granite sides. There may be streams and waterfalls cascading down the slopes. There may be one peak or a series of peaks or with meadows and high lakes. Observing it, noting its qualities, and when you feel ready, seeing if you can bring the mountain into your own body. Sitting here so that your body and the mountain in your mind's eye become one. So that as you sit here, you share in the massiveness and stillness and majesty of the mountain. You become the mountain. Grounded in the sitting posture, your head becomes the lofty peak, supported by the rest of your body and affording a panoramic view. Your shoulders and arms, the sides of the mountain, your buttocks and legs, the solid base, rooted to your cushion or your chair, experiencing in your body a sense of uplift from deep within your pelvis and spine. With each breath, as you continue sitting, becoming a little more a breathing mountain, alive and vital, yet unwavering in your inner stillness, completely what you are, beyond words and a thought, a centered, grounded, unmoving presence. As you sit here, becoming aware of the fact that as the sun travels across the sky, the light and shadows 
and colors are changing virtually moment by moment in the mountain stillness. And the surface teems with life and activity. Streams, melting snow, waterfalls, plants, and wildlife. As the mountain sits, seeing and feeling how night follows day and day follows night. The bright warming sun, followed by the cool night sky, studded with stars, and the gradual dawning of a new day. Through it all, the mountain just sits, experiencing change in each moment, constantly changing, yet always just being itself. It remains still as the seasons flow into one another, and as the weather changes moment by moment and day by day, calmness abiding all change. In the summer, there is no snow on the mountain, except perhaps for the very peaks or crags shielded from direct sunlight. In the fall, the mountain may wear a coat of brilliant fire colors. In the winter, a blanket of snow and ice. In any season, it may find itself at times enshrouded in clouds or fog or pelted by freezing rain. People may come to see the mountain and comment how beautiful it is or how it's not a good day to see the mountain that it's too cloudy, or rainy, or foggy, or dark. None of this matters to the mountain, which remains at all times its essential self. Clouds may come, and clouds may go. Tourists may like it or not. The mountain's magnificence and beauty are not changed one bit by whether people see it or not, seen or unseen, in sun or clouds, broiling or frigid, day or night. It just sits, being itself, at times visited by violent storms, buffeted by snow and rain and winds of unthinkable magnitude. Through it all, the mountain sits. Spring comes, trees leaf out, flowers bloom in the high meadows and slopes. Birds sing in the trees once again. 
Streams overflow with the waters of melting snow. Through it all, the mountain continues to sit, unmoved by weather, by what happens on its surface, by the world of appearances. Remaining its essential self through the seasons, the changing weather, the activity ebbing and flowing on its surface. In the same way, as we sit in meditation, we can learn to experience the mountain. We can embody the same central, unwavering stillness and groundedness in the face of everything that changes in our lives. Over seconds, hours, over years. In our lives and in our meditation practice, we experience constantly the changing nature of mind and body and the outer world. We have our own periods of light and darkness, activity and inactivity, our moments of color and our moments of drabness. It's true that we experience storms of varying intensity and violence in our outer world and in our own minds and bodies, buffeted by high winds, by cold and rain. We endure periods of darkness and pain as well as the moments of joy and uplift. Even our appearance changes constantly, experiencing a weather of its own. By becoming the mountain in our meditation practice, we can link up with its strength and stability and adopt them for our own. We can use its energies to support our energy to encounter each moment with mindfulness and equanimity and clarity. It may help us to see that our thoughts and feelings, our preoccupations, our emotional storms and crises, even the things that happen to us, are very much like the weather on the mountain. We tend to take it all personally, but its strongest characteristic is impersonal. The weather of our own lives is not to be ignored or denied. It is to be encountered, honored, felt, and known for what it is, and held in awareness, and in holding it in this way, we come to know a deeper silence and stillness, 
and wisdom. Mountains have this to teach us, and much more if we can let it in. So if you find you resonate in some way with the strength and stability of the mountain in your sitting, it may be helpful to use it from time to time in your meditation practice to remind you what it means to sit mindfully with resolve and wakefulness in true stillness. So, in the time that remains, continuing to sustain the mountain meditation on your own, in silence, moment by moment until you hear the sound of the bells. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you to those listeners who've reached out to let us know that you want more guided imagery. We'll get right on that. You can let us know what kinds of meditation you're interested in by getting in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter at Military Health. The Military Meditation Coach Podcast is produced by the Naval Center for Combat and Operational Stress Control and by the Defense Health Agency. Thank you for rating us and subscribing on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. The views expressed here are those of the presenters and do not reflect the official policy of the Department of Defense or the United States government. <laughs>